And what's that one? Another beauty. Trichoadenoma, yeah. And they're basically a bunch of tiny little keratinaceous cysts that are all relatively even-ish in size and they're all packed together in the dermis. And look from here again, look at that stroma. See how it's got, it's, you can see that's where the lesion ends. Out around the outside of the whole thing, there's a, it's encased in this fibrotic stroma. Again, that's analogous to the adventitia, that outer fibrous layer around normal hair follicles. Go look at a hair follicle sometime. If you've never seen that before, there's a little band of fibrous stuff around normal follicles, and that's what's getting recapitulated here. Follicular tumors, I think, are the hardest subset of adnexal tumors because there's so many of them, and I think another, I, Dr. Rapini had a huge influence on my career also. I got to spend a couple months with him in residency in Houston, and I love, love what he says. He said they're like snowflakes. Each one is a little bit different. It's so true. There's no two that are quite exactly alike. They all have slight differences to them each time, which makes them more challenging to classify. Fortunately, most of them are benign. One thing you can see in anything with keratin microcyst is this granulomatous reaction to keratin debris. You can see that in any keratinaceous, keratin-producing thing. If that keratin breaks out, gets into the dermis, Keratin's fine as long as it's outside the body. Once it gets down past the basement membrane and into the dermis, the body is really unhappy about it. And uh, so um, some people compare these to donuts. Um, my program director, Doug Parker, like to say if you go to like Home Depot and you look at the aisle where they have like PVC pipe, you know, those plastic pipes, you cut, look at a stack of PVC and it looks like a bunch of PVC pipes stacked up. And I thought that was actually a pretty cool analogy. So if you're into like building and stuff, maybe you like that better. I like donuts too, so... trichoadenoma. And sometimes you can get cysts like this in uh, trichoepitheliomas. The difference there to me is if I start seeing basaloid aggregates, either little strands of them or, or more nodular forms that look almost like a basal cell, then I start thinking more towards it being a trichoepithelioma. Guess what? It matters 0% for clinical care, okay? If a person has a solitary trichoep or a solitary trichoadenoma, it doesn't matter what you call it. Splitting is fun, but you know, don't lose sleep over splitting benign things that are treated the same way and have the same prognosis. Save your, your hedging and your worry for times where it's like spitzoid melanoma versus spitznevis. That's the time to hedge, okay? Don't waste it on, well, it could be a veruca, but it could be a seb, and there's overlap. No, it's the best seb I've ever seen. Definitely, there's no doubt at all. And then you can save up those hedging points for when you really need it for patient care. So I think that's a good, a good take-home point. 